Uh, Auditor Cinziano, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Brent Swander, Vice President of Government Affairs with Columbus Realtors, and we are joined today by Franklin County Auditor Michael Cinziano. Auditor, it's um, a sincere pleasure to have you back. We did one of these in May, I think it was May 28th, when we actually held a government affairs forum to talk about what was to come. So thank you for rejoining us. Uh, this is critical information for our members and for the consumers. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. And you're right, it was a while ago where we kind of outlined the process. Now the day has come where this information's out there and we wanna make sure we're answering any and all questions that are, are coming up. Perfect, thank you. So let's just get right into it. Uh, we talk a lot about the triennial update. Why don't you just walk us through what the triennial update is and how it's different from the full six year reappraisal? So the full reappraisal is required under Ohio law. It happens every six years and it is a mass process where the auditor's office goes out, reviews and tries to, as best as possible, identify all the characteristics within the home uh, and update values accordingly. There's a three year in between, which is the triennial update, which is where we are in 2020. And this is different in that we are looking at real estate market and sales from years 17, 18 and 19 and updating values strictly on those sales. And, and so it is a much different approach uh, for the 435,000 plus uh, parcels across the county. Uh, and because of the booming market, um, which is a good thing, uh, it has different effects for property owners. And so we're not as uh, focused on different characteristics. Uh, this is not an annual uh, maintenance update. Uh, this is a three-year review of sales and what the data has shown. So you hit on a couple things there that I think are important, uh, <laughs> that are very important to our members and as our members are a resource to their clients um, and may even hopefully share this video with their clients. Characteristics, um, characteristics of property. Let's talk about one of the questions that comes up quite frequently. Um, split levels and basements. Um, how do you appraise those and how do those differ? What, what, what does that look like in the auditor's world? So we treat finished basements in two ways. Um, in split level, multi-level or bi-level style homes, the finished below grade area uh, is part of the functional utility of the home. Uh, these style homes are designed and built with the below grade level area, uh, including in the main living area of the home. Uh, that finished below grade area is the same workmanship and quality as the above uh, square footage. Uh, we indicate that square footage and distinguish as, as below grade, but it is added uh, to the gross living area uh, when we make our calculation. Uh, at the same time, if we've got the information for any conventional style home, if it's a ranch, a two-story, a Cape Cod, uh, we will indicate the below grade square footage as a rec room. Uh, this, regardless of a walkout or egress window, uh, is how they've made that determination. Uh, the contributory value of the rec room is included in the total market value, but it's not included in that gross living area. Uh, the office relies on this as the standard practice according to the, I always get this acronym wrong, the ANSI, American National Standards Institute. Uh, fee appraisers as opposed to mass appraisers will treat all below grade square footage in this manner. And then you hit on another, <laughs> thank you, because our, our members ask that a lot. Uh, Every time I'm with you guys, it comes up. So yep. I'll, I'm getting it down. Exactly, exactly. Um, one of the other things you hit on quickly was, I heard you stop when you were talking about the, the triennial, you stopped at year 2019. Um, market conditions are very different um, now than they were in 2019. We, for the first time in history, have actually seen sales price exceed asking price in our uh, housing stats. Uh, quite frankly and candidly, there's some uncertainty in commercial property as, it, as uh, COVID-19 um, is upon us and with um, retail and office specifically. So I hear you stop at 2019 and that is because it's a look back and not current market conditions. Is that, is that an accurate statement? That is an exact statement. The, the Ohio law requires that three-year review. Uh, so we cut off on December 31st, uh, and that's what the analysis relies on. In this case, years 17, 18, and 19. 
I, th um, I think that's a really important distinction. Yeah, and, and we were sensitive, and as March hit and we were preparing for the try uh, with the unknown impact of uh, the health pandemic would have on values, uh, we did seek an extension so we could factor in 2020 uh, from the State Department of Taxation. Uh, that request for extension was denied. Uh, and so we, of course, will move forward with our statutory obligation, which is where we're at. Um, but sensitive and aware of those, that unknown and now what's becoming the reality of this pandemic and this year. And so continuing to uh, keep that top of mind, but how it plays into the try isn't going to be factored in. Perfect. Um, and as we look back over those last couple of years, we know that home values, as I just said, continue, home values specifically continue to increase. Um, back in May, in late May, we were talking about upwards of 20 or 25% um, valuation increases in some, some areas. Um, I think there's still some misinformation or uh, uh, unknowns that people believe it's a one-to-one -one value to tax increase. Uh, why don't you highlight that uh, <laughs> that for us and set the record straight? Second biggest question we get is, how is this going to impact uh, my property taxes? So under Ohio law, as you pointed out, uh, if and what we're going to see in Franklin County is on average a 20% increase. That does not, on residential, on commercial, it's about 15% increase. That does not equate to that one-to-one. -one. So your property taxes won't go up 20% uh, along with that valuation. Uh, we take, uh, under Ohio law, the appraised value, which will be determined in December, uh, we're currently just at the tentative, so the suggested rate, uh, take 35% of that, uh, and then based on inside and outside voted millage is how we get to the property tax rate. Uh, so on inside millage, it can go up an additional 10%, the outside millage won't. Uh, so if a school district, for example, went to the ballot a number of years ago, and said, this is how much money we are looking to get with this levy, that does not all of a sudden increase because of the additional uh, property taxes. Uh, but it's been very hard and, and complicated for folks to always remember that play and dynamic. When they see a 20% increase, um, that's a good investment. Uh, you wanna see your property values increase. Um, 2020 aside, uh, the challenge uh, then is how does it play out with the property taxes? And we've seen from 2017 when we did our last mass appraisal, uh, situations where values go up, taxes go down, uh, values go down, taxes go up. It's really going to depend on the specific district. And where uh, I've personally been frustrated is we can't uh, share with people exactly what uh, their potential uh, taxes will be. We have to get through November. Uh, and what will be on the ballot and voted upon by voters to get those taxing district and those different rates. Uh, what I do share with folks uh, and people need to keep in mind is at the primary, uh, Franklin County voters did approve the Columbus State bond issue. So we are adding a new uh, item for property taxes to be applied to. Uh, that will have an impact and add an additional element that was not in previous uh, property tax bills. That has nothing to do with the valuation, just the items that property taxes are going to continue to be funded by. Perfect. So we can set the record straight today that a certain percentage increase does not mean a one-to-one -one value to taxes. We can, Absolutely. We, we, can, we can make certain that that is an absolute fact. Yes. Um, yes. Let's talk a little bit about commercial properties. I kind of highlighted it or hinted it a little bit. We do know uh, one of the things we want to promote is your2020homevalue.org. Your2020homevalue.org. Um, is the process same for our commercial members as it is residential in the informal property reviews? Commercial property members will be receiving a specific mailer uh, identifying their commercial property. The your 2020homevalue.org uh, is the larger portion of properties in the county. So that's why it became that branding. Uh, originally, we talked about just your 2020 property. Uh, we had met with a focus group and, and this is where we landed, but it's meant to be the one-stop shop to answer any questions about the triennial. Uh, unlike in years past, uh, 
where maybe some commercial owners would go to the informal reviews. Everything is online. Commercial has always been encouraged or more most recently been encouraged to uh, schedule online. Uh, but in terms of documents to bring or questions about the process and taking the time uh, to meet with an appraiser uh, and share why you think the values are too high or too low, uh, that is the one-stop shop website to go to. So two, two questions with that. You mentioned meeting with an appraiser. So first, let's talk about the timeline. Um, tentative values have been sent out as of today. They were previously sent out. So why don't you talk about the um, timeline and also talking about what meeting with an appraiser and the informal property reviews will look like given the global pandemic. One thing we do in Franklin County not required by law is provide for the opportunity of when these values are uh, shared to meet with an appraiser, educate our office on the opportunity of where uh, we need to take into account additional factors. So when we do the triennial, we take the entire county, uh, we divide it by triennial neighborhoods. So we actually break things down about uh, 1700 different triennial neighborhoods. Some characteristics make uh, are traditional, some are a little different. Uh, but then looking at that sales review, then we apply it across the board. Where folks then want to educate and, and should take advantage of educating us is to take the time, uh, schedule that informal review, and then meet with a uh, office appraiser and share where we may not have a, a complete understanding of the direct impact of your property. Um, bring uh, outside ass uh, assessed values, look at comparable sales, or just again adding additional information that that uh, sales review across the county may not have impacted. It's different this year in that it will be convenient to your schedule, to your availability. Uh, and if you go to the year2020homevalue.org website, uh, can schedule to meet one-on-one -on -one with those appraisers. And on the commercial side, there's a different um, stream or box to meet with uh, folks from our office on the commercial side. When you have those meetings, you present your document, educate us. Uh, final determination is not made at the end of that meeting. Uh, we have to go back to the State Department of Taxation, uh, work with them, and then in December for any property owner that, that took advantage of the informal review process, uh, we will then send an updated final property value uh, decision. For those that wonder, is this really worth my time? 72% uh, of the property owners that took advantage of 2017 saw a reduction. So we absolutely feel there is no downside to taking advantage of the informal review process. A small percentage did see an increase. Uh, we still have those. Got an email this week from someone who felt we appraised too low and would like to see an increase. Um, and then the rest were held, uh, held flat. And so that is what can occur in, uh, for 2020 on the triennial review. If property owners are still uh, not satisfied or still have additional concerns or think there's other factors we need to take into account, then we move into the 2021 Board of Revision uh, timeline and process. And knowing, as we kind of discussed already, the pandemic impact from 2020, we do anticipate and are preparing accordingly for a very busy Board of Revision uh, season. So two things out of that, and I think we'll wrap it up after, after this, hopefully. Um, Your2020homevalue.org is where folks can go to schedule, um, or they can call your office. Is that a fair statement as well? Is that an accurate? They can you can call always call the office, 614-525-HOME. Okay. 614-525-HOME, or Your2020homevalue.org. Um, lastly, I hear you say educate our office. So this is not one of the words I have, I have heard you say is educate. The word I have not heard you say is appeal. Um, and I think there's some confusion there too. And maybe we try to set this record straight on that as well. So I appreciate you making that point. And these are tentative values, again, based on an algorithm and that real estate uh, look back. Uh, the educate, so it's not a challenge. It's not appeal. It's not a final determination. I would agree the Board of Revisions is more of an appeal process. Uh, the informal review is the opportunity to share with us additional documents, additional information uh, that going through the algorithm uh, 
approach that, that we did is not going to have taken into account. Uh, and so it is a great opportunity sitting down with an appraiser, uh, sharing additional documents, additional information uh, that will be helpful for us to reach those, the final uh, property valuations. So a couple key takeaways that I've taken away from our conversation today. Um, this is not, again, this is a look back. This is not a current market condition. Um, a likely, or you said average of 20% across Franklin County does not mean a 20% tax increase there. An absolute factual statement is it is not a one-to-one. -one. Right. Uh, we don't have those specific numbers because it's based on taxing district. Um, I heard you say that, um, education is, um, education of your office and of the appraisers is, is something else I've, I've taken away in the informal property reviews rather than an appeal process. So um, your2020homevalue.org, 614-525-HOME, correct? Email me as well, auditorstentiano at franklincountyohio.gov. Uh, I just want to say, John Giha, on behalf of our new CEO, John Giha, and our entire government affairs team, um, the information flow from your office is unparalleled. Um, we truly do, and I sincerely mean this, is saying that um, we try to promote as much information as we can and so that our members are not only knowledgeable, because a lot of them are obviously property owners, they're housing providers, they have commercial property, but so that they are a resource to their constituents. Um, so we appreciate your time today. Um, anything you want to say in closing? Just really appreciate the ongoing partnership. And as more questions come up, let us know. Uh, we do have a Q&A section on the uh, your2020homevalue.org. If there's additional questions that you think would be helpful, either for your members or any of their clients, let us know. Uh, it is a living, breathing document in terms of being able to be functional and updated accordingly. Perfect. Well, we appreciate it, Otter. Thank you.